Hi, my name is Gavin Campbell. I am a PhD candidate at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica, and I'll be presenting to you today on Noto Nectar Indica, its life history and biological consumption of mosquitoes. As mentioned before, I'm a PhD candidate. I study temporary water bodies overall, and I'll be presenting to you on just a sliver of some of my work. Here is the outline of the presentation from introduction straight through to results and recommendations. And starting with the introduction, we have the introduction of temporary waters. So temporary waters are those bodies of water that experience a recurrent dry phase, and they can be happening within a particular year or within a particular decade. So they're dry at one point and they're wet at one point as well. They're typically understudied environments, especially within urban areas, and they have many predators, including dragonflies, beetles, and vaxomers. The evaluation of their ecosystem services also remains quite low, which is what prompted my work into this particular topic. So I'll be focusing on Nozonecta indica, which is in the family Nozonecta today, which is the family of backswimmers, and it is the largest backswimmer in Jamaica. It is, a, it is a dispersive predator, which means that it flies around as much as it can, and it feeds on mosquito larvae and pupa, pupae, as well as many other species as well. So of the mosquitoes that I can confirm that it does eat, there are Aedes aegypti and Culex nigropapus. So here are the eggs of the, of the Notonecta indica, with some small red eye spots developing. Here are two nymphs feeding on a mosquito larva together. Here is an older nymph, and yet again, an older nymph feeding this time on a mosquito pupa. Here are the adults. So on the dorsal surface, we can see that they have different colorations. The aims of this project were to investigate the life history of Nosonecta indica, to quantify mosquito suppression throughout the life history of Nosonecta indica, and to investigate the effect of density on mosquito suppression by Nosonecta indica. We start with the methodology. And first is mosquito rearing. So Aedes aegypti was the mosquito that was selected for this project, and it is the vector of yellow fever, malaria, chick V, and zig V. It is responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths worldwide each year. The adults were kept in 0.027 cubic meter cages, and they were at a temperature of 28.31 degrees and humidity of 75.66%. The larvae and pupae were reared in jars of tap water and they were fed on shredded oats. And they were under a light regime of 12 hours light and 12 hours of darkness. The adults were fed weekly on blood from my own self and the eggs were stored until they were needed to be used. So, so this one is just a, a warning for what's coming next. It's a bit gruesome based on what I had just mentioned. So this is my arm in the cage being fed on by different adult females of Aedes aegypti on the left. You can see the red is their, um, their abdomen filled with blood. And on the right, you have a picture of my arm after the process. There were a lot of bumps, but they went down within a few minutes, so it's not too bad. So following that, we have notes on exact indica rearing. So adults were collected from the Department of Life Sciences here in Mona, and these produced eggs. The young were reared in jars of 0.5 liters of dechlorinated tap water, and they were fed on mosquito larvae and pupae daily. The duration of their life history stages was documented at each stage, and mosquito suppression was documented throughout this process. With respect to mosquito suppression, no connectives were taken out of their group clutches and reared individually throughout their developmental stages. They were provided with 100 L4 larvae of Aedes aegypti every day, and that was a data density of 200 larvae per liter. So with respect to the mosquito suppression, nosonectives were reared individually throughout their developmental stages, and they were provided with 100 L4 Aedes aegypti larvae every single day, and that was at a density of 200 larvae per liter. A control was established of 100 L4 larvae, maintaining the same 200 larvae per liter concentration. 
The dead larvae and pupae were recorded every 24 hours and then replaced with 100 live L4 larvae. This was done for a minimum of three days for each individual as long as the individual was alive. With respect to mosquito suppression, individuals were given different densities of mosquito larvae per day, either as single individual notamethids or paired individuals and mosquito suppression calculated. The densities used were the original density of 200 uh, larvae per liter, followed by 400 and 800 larvae per liter. Results and discussion, life history. Egg development is the first stage of this organism's life and from overposition straight through to hatching, it normally takes around eight days for these individuals to fully hatch out. On day four, you can see a red eye spot developing. And then by day seven, you can see more body definition and larger red eye spots developing. The duration of each life stage of Notoineta indica varied throughout, with the highest duration or the greatest duration being in the egg stages and in the N5 stages, which were significantly different from all the other NIM stages. So the median time taken for development was 33.5 days, and this coincided with findings of Anisop sardius from Chanu Gupta and Gupta 2020. Death was commonly associated with transition to the next stage, either before, during, or right after transitioning to the next stage, individuals would die. As a proportion of the number of eggs that were available, we can see that all eggs at 100%, they were able to move on to the next stage, which means that they all hatched. And for N1 individuals, only 66% of those eggs that had hatched were able to move on to the next stage, which is N2. And you can see that decreasing as it goes forward. We can see that only 6% of all the eggs that had hatched were able to make it to adulthood. Similar findings have been recorded by McPherson in 1967 with N. Hoffman. Only 6% survived to adulthood. Mosquito suppression. More larvae were killed at later life stages, and we can see that increasing as you go through the different life stages. And when adult individuals versus adult peers were um, analyzed, there was a slight increase when it comes to the peers, but this was not significantly different overall. And these were done at an initial density of 200 mosquito larvae per liter. So all different stages and the same density. And we can see that the control only registered in one death of mosquitoes. When comparing mosquito suppression and density, we see that with respect to the control, there's very little difference with increasing density. But with the adults and the adult pairs, there is a greater amount of consumption with respect to density. As density increased, there was an increase in mosquito, mosquito consumption, and this was significant for all except the, the pairs. Recommendations. Laboratory rearing of Nota Necta Indica is not feasible, seeing that only 6% of individuals survive from egg development through to adulthood. What would be best and preferred would be the protection and integration of wetlands in urban areas, which are the main habitats for Aedes aegypti and Aedes albicans. Mosquitoes notably avoid overposition in waters with predators, thus they would prefer newly created temporary waters that are devoid of predators. Dispersive predators would then be important in mosquito and disease control as they move from their perennial locations to temporary water locations, being able to, to consume the availability of new mosquito resources as well as other insects. More research is needed into group versus individual density reduction, other mosquito predators, and also predator-predator interactions. The end. You can find me at dragonandfight.com on ResearchGate or on Twitter at Dragon Ecology. These are some references, and please feel free to ask any questions. I really love answering questions, and I look forward to hearing them. Thank you.